Hi, I'm Leroy Jenkins. I'd like for you to stay tuned for the next 30 minutes and what you see and hear will help change your life. door neighbor and say God bless you and I love you. Now how many of you know somebody that you didn't know before you got here? Well, let's get acquainted. This is get acquainted night. See somebody you don't know, go over and, and introduce yourself. You folks start being Christian like started to begin serving a new day is like a cup of new life know what I miss he was waiting right there all the time It's a, a 
a little cool tonight, isn't it? A little better for you? Amen. I saw a gentleman come walking in. I was hoping he wouldn't leave, but he decided he didn't want to be healed. He's crippled. He's too dead to get healed anyhow. Amen. I, I can't believe I was ever a Presbyterian. You, you holy rollers have ruined me. Amen. But I'm a firm believer. If you go to church and don't go to have a great time, you should stay at home. Don't you? Rather, praise God. What'd you say? I say, if you don't believe in God, don't believe in nothing. I like God that. God is the greatest thing there is. How long have you been a, a Christian, sir? Since about 1954. And let me ask you a question. Sit down, folks. Y'all like to stand better than anybody I've ever seen. <laughs> sir, I don't have to ask you if you're a Christian. I ask you how long, didn't I? Yes, sir. You know why? You can tell that you are. My granddaddy was a hard shell preacher back in the 19, early 1900s, and he started when he was 18 years old, and he got no desire, no training or anything except for Jesus Christ. That's the best kind to have. And my father, he was a good Christian, and I, I, I rambled around, and I went to the wars, and I came back, but I turned my life over to Jesus Christ. And I have been a Christian ever since. And Lord, God bless him. And can I mention my church? Of course you can. I go to Southside Baptist Church. I am a deacon over there. But I like to come to revivals to revive my knowledge in Jesus Christ. A lot of, a lot of people just don't, don't see it, but I do. It, it's great to be here tonight. I was here last night, but I saw you on TV when you was in, I think in Miami the other day or something. I said, well, I'm going to his revivals. And I am so glad that you did. Thank you. It's it's nice to meet a, a real I'm Christian with tears running down his eyes. And I believe every word he said. I have no problems in believing that. And he's come sit on the front row. Praise God. Sir, I want to pray for you. Father, I ask that you give this brother many more wonderful years and help and prosperity and his family in Jesus name Amen bless you God bless you I am 72 years old 72 you're just a boy Amen oh, I do I think it I count it an honor for you being here and I'm going to tell you something else. You're a sharp dude. <laughs> you certainly are. Right. <laughs> we both look sharp, don't we? I saw myself before I left him. I said, Leroy Jenkins, you should look sharp tonight, kid. Amen. Thank you. I don't care if anybody else tells me or not. I just talk to myself anyhow. As long as I don't start answering myself, I'm all right. <laughs> I bet you people have seen things here that you've never seen before, haven't you? And, and another thing, I, I know for a fact that you couldn't believe that there's people that's crippled that don't want to be healed.
You didn't believe that, though, did you? you? You would believe that everybody that was crippled would like to be healed. But I just saw a, a, a fellow just then come in and started in and, and couldn't hardly walk like this. And I'd already made up my mind I was going to grab him and run with him. And then I said, no, he's too dead for me. If you get around dead folks, you'll die too, won't you, brother? Amen. Here, this, this gentleman, I tell you, he, he said, I know where to go. I'm a Baptist deacon, but I know where to go and get my soul revived. Amen. And that's the way everybody should feel. Come together in the house of the Lord. And it doesn't matter what church or denomination you are. There's only one faith, one Lord, one baptism, and it's all in God's word. And tonight, I'm going to share with you a little bit of what I feel is the gift of knowledge. Would you like to hear about that? Yeah. I'd like to talk to you about how it works and how it doesn't work and how you can tell the real from a counterfeit. A counterfeit is no more than what he sounds like, counterfeit. Meaning it can spend, you can spend a $20 counterfeit bill and you can buy merchandise with it. And it seems like that it's all right because the person that you gave it to didn't know that it was counterfeit. And it worked. Are you with me? But as soon as somebody with the knowledge of that counterfeit bill looks at it, right away they recognize it as being counterfeit. Somebody's already spent it. They don't know who. The merchant uh, got stuck with it, and they got the merchandise, and they split. If you have the power of God and the Holy Spirit, you should know a counterfeit from a real. The Bible says you can recognize it in the works that they do or by their spirit you might know them. A counterfeit preacher will not ever walk out into an audience and say, I challenge any one of you to come and see if I have the gift or not. A counterfeit person will not do that. A counterfeit person will not pray for a person without they have knowledge of that person's ability to walk or whatever. If that person is crippled and they know they are and they know they cannot walk, they'll never get prayed for. But if they think they can walk just a, a little bit, they'll get that person up and make a big scene out of it. As that person was a cripple and if they don't watch them too close because they'll set somebody in a wheelchair and roll them in and make it look like they were healed. There's all kinds and you can know them. And most of them will take two and three and four offerings. Come on now, shout with me a little bit. And they'll preach on three hours on give me and take another two hours to get it. And you can't get near them. Counterfeit preacher don't want you to shake their hand. And a counterfeit preacher won't tell you the truth. He'll make you sound, oh, that you're so wonderful no matter what you do. A counterfeit preacher will not tell you, come down here if you don't believe I'm a prophet of God and I will tell you about yourself. They won't. You've never heard it before, have you? This is the first time y'all heard that. You're in shock because you finally met somebody that's got a gift and you don't know what to do with it. You can't handle reality and knowing there's something really real going on. Now, there's nothing unusual. This 
deacon here will tell you, there's nothing unusual about walking into a church and sitting down and listening to a choir sing and a preacher preach. There ain't nothing unusual about that. That's routine. That happens every week. Same thing, same place, same preacher, few different people. But the Bible said God's people are peculiar people. The Bible says God's people are so peculiar they do things that other people won't do. Amen. Such as they'll lift their hands up and they'll wave them and they'll glorify God and they don't care if the people at the ball field like it or not. Amen. 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 I know for a fact that there's nothing peculiar about listening to a sermon. Anybody can preach. All you got to do is get a Bible and read it to the people like, and, and expound on it a little bit and give your point of views on it. But to have the gifts that God said follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts and get the gifts and put them into operation is another story. Sugar Ray Leonard was saved under this very tent right here. A year ago, a last summer in Columbus, Ohio. He flew from Concord, California and came and sat on the platform, testified and stood up and repeated the sinner's prayer. And that's unusual to pay $7,000 to fly to a tent crusade and get saved and turn around and fly back the next morning. That is a bit unusual. <laughs> Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts is what God told you to do. Amen. Now why would he tell you to desire spiritual gifts if he didn't intend for them to operate in the churches? If God did not intend for somebody to have the gift of knowledge to know things, he didn't have to give it to me. He didn't have to give it to other people. See, the greatest gift of all gifts is the gift of salvation. When you can say you have accepted something that you've never seen and you believe in a person that you've never laid eyes on and he's been gone close to 2,000 years, that is a real miracle in itself right there. The Bible says all that you have to do to be saved is believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and that is all that you have to do according to the word of God. And I think that's about what we are after, salvation, isn't it? Uh, we don't exactly, you know, uh, if there wasn't a hell, we wouldn't really care whether there's a heaven or not. Y'all ain't fooling me at all. If you didn't think there was a pit of fire somewhere burning, you wouldn't come to church. And if everybody wanted to go to heaven, all you Christians wouldn't get in the prayer line. Hello. Oh, you'll sing how wonderful and beautiful heaven must be, but nobody wants to die to go, do they? And you have all these problems and heartaches and burdens and sorrows and house bills and light bills and water bills and car bills and fussing and fighting and all this other stuff, but at the, and heaven is so wonderful, but we don't want to go. If you hear tell of some miracle cream, you'll go buy it. Everybody's gone ape on diets. They're trying to eat and get healthy. They're doing everything they can where they won't die. And you know it's something about a graveyard. People are just dying to get in. <laughs> that sort of reminds me of this little boy one time his mother was sick and his mother said son said run down the street there and get the doctor said I'm sick and the little boy started running down the road and the Christian scientist practitioner stopped him said son where are you going in such a hurry said I'm going to get the doctor said mama's sick 
to go back and tell her she's not sick. She just thinks she is. He ran back, and the mother said, Did the, is the doctor coming? said, no, ma'am. said, the lady told me to, that you was not sick. You just thought you was. Oh, son, go get the doctor. So he starts back again. Lady stops him again, sent him back again. His mother said, did you get the doctor? said, no. said, that lady told me that you wasn't sick. And he looked, and his mother just fell over, wasn't breathing or nothing, so he took off down the road just to fly, and the lady said, son, where are you going now? He said, I'm going to get the undertaker. Mama thinks she's dead. <laughs> And people believe if they can deny a thing, it'll go away. Huh? And the Bible says the thing that you fear will come upon you, right? Okay, I'm fearing a million dollars. I'm having nightmares about it every night. I just fear that that thing's gonna come and get in my pocket. can you walk up to a rank stranger and how can you not believe when a, wait a minute, first of all, how many of you people have I come to since I've been here? Stand up, would you? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16, 18, 22, 24, 26, 30, approximately 35 people. Let me ask you a question. Did I tell you the truth? And let me ask you another question. Did it work? See, there, there's the main thing. Did it work? Lady, you're still walking. So it worked for you, didn't it? There, do you know this lady that you're sitting beside? Do you know her? Did you know her before she came over here? Did you see how crippled she was and walking on a cane and still real crippled with a cane? You saw that. And now you see her now, don't you? Do you see a difference? Come here a minute. I'm going to put you nationwide on television just because you're here. This ain't going to make a star out of you right here in Savannah, Georgia. I'm going to do something that nobody else ever have done. You know this lady. Yes, yes, that's my mother. That's your mother. Yes. And she came to this meeting and came back different. Yes, you did. And been different. Yes. And, and, and otherwise, you wouldn't have come over here. If it hadn't been, would it? No, sir, I wouldn't. Okay, I'm going to tell you something. I didn't just call you down here. I got something for you. Thank you. I got something for you. Somebody say amen. <laughs> Lord sent you over here to save you and your life and drop some habits that you've got that you can't get rid of. Yes. Is this true? Yes. Now, you didn't tell me, did you, Mother? You know about it, though, don't you? And you didn't talk to me. No, I didn't. First time we've ever talked. Yes. Now, I could be as wrong as the left shoe on the right foot if I wasn't a prophet of God, couldn't I? Yes, you could. But do I know my business? You call me the right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lift up your hands. Your days of sin is over. In the name of Jesus Christ, I deliver you from all of these habits to go for thy glory and repeat this prayer. Father, Father, save me. Save me. I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. This night. This night. Amen. Amen. I'm saved. Go tell your mother. Mother, I'm saved. I'm born again. I like to be able to show you how it works and show you as I talk about it how it is real and how it does work. You didn't even think nothing about that. You didn't have nothing that popped up in your mind that was wrong with that fella, did you? Huh? I didn't see no cigarette packs. I didn't see nothing to indicate. I didn't see no drugs hanging on his pocket. I didn't see no liquor bottles. I didn't see nothing sinful looking. He was smiling, sitting there, agreeing with everything I was saying. Now, how did I know if I don't have the gift, you tell me I'm not a palm reader. I don't read tea leaves. There's one Madam Flucy lives across the street. She'll read your palm 
tell you more lies in five minutes than you can get rid of in five years. Amen. And there's a bunch of you that's been over there letting her read your palm too. And they'll never tell you nothing bad. And the more they tell you, the more they won't. Isn't that wonderful? Now, you saw with your eyes what God is doing. And he'll do the same for you. But my big thing today is there's so many thousands of you people that cannot come to a crusade. But you do have a phone. Most everybody you see has a cell phone or a telephone. And you have a hand to pick it up and dial the number on the screen. It's free. The water is free. And of course, the miracle is free. So pick up your phone right now and call the number on the screen and let me send this immediately to you. I'm asking for 300 people with enough faith to pick up your phone and call me right now. Don't delay it another second. Do it right now and let me get it to you immediately. And if it don't work, it didn't work. But I promise you, it will work. We have a lot of things we can talk about, but the issue is you. And uh, a lot of you with a lot of health problems, a lot of things that uh, you need answers for. I don't claim to be the smartest person in the world, but I've had a great experience with God when in Atlanta, Georgia, I had my right arm severed. I went to a crusade uh, by Reverend A. A. Allen, and he never prayed for me. He didn't have to. My faith was released, and my arm started moving. They had been severed. And doctors said there was nothing they could do but amputate it on off. And while I was there, my faith released and God did a miracle. So that's what we want to talk about. All of these are testimonials from people that wrote in or called in, just like I'm asking you to do. So to inspire you, I want to tell you that thousands of people are ordering this water. It's free and the phone call is free. All you have to do is pick up the phone and call me. You watch me hand this little bottle of water to many people in the crusade and have them drink it right there and things begin to happen. And God will do the same thing for you. So please pick up your phone and call the number on the screen and let me send this to you immediately. Thank you and God bless you until next time. Be one of the first 300 to call for your free vial of blessed water as a point of contact to release your faith in God's appointed miracle in your life. Many people have already experienced their miracle through their blessed water. Get yours today.